All right, here we are in video one of lesson 15. And hopefully this slide is going to pop up. There we go. All right, so here you see we have three different methods of division. And recording the work to divide 798 by 38. You see Kayla's method, Tara's method, and Eddie's method. Take a minute to just study those methods and see what are the differences that you see there. Did you notice that Kayla and Tara are using an area model? And Eddie is using the vertical form, but he also has partial quotients here. You see the two numbers. Right. Okay. And what do you notice about their work? Well, you might have noticed that they're all ending up with the same answer. That's good, right? Okay. And they're all putting their 38, their divisor over here on the left hand side. So I think that will help you no matter which method you decide to use that the divisor the one that's doing the division divisor is on the left hand side, right? Okay, very good. And maybe you notice that Kayla and Tara are both using area models, but the area models look a little bit different, right? Kayla is using two triangles. She has 10 times 38 is 380. 10 times 38 is 380. And Tara's doing 20 times 38 is 760. So she has 20 groups of 38 represented here, where Kayla has 10 groups in two chunks. Kayla has three partial product, partial quotients, one, two, three. And Tara only has two partial quotients. Notice that Tara has a 20 and a 1, and Eddie has a 20 and a 1. Do you see that? Okay. Hmm. There's subtraction here inside the vertical form, but in the area model, you don't use subtraction, you use addition. That's interesting. Okay. So Kayla and Tara have different area models and different partial products, but they have the same quotient. So how is that possible? What's going on there? Look at what they're doing. Do you see that? Here's their quotients, right? They're on top as well as the quotients. All the quotients are on top. So that's another thing that's the same. 10 and 10 and 1, 20 and 1, 20 and 1. So they're using different um, partial quotients here because Kayla started with 10 times 38 is 380 and Tara went straight to 20 times 38 is 760. It might be a little easier to think about the tens because we know that 10 times 38 is 380. You wouldn't have to do some multiplication on the side, right? While Tara and Eddie's look different, they have the same partial quotients, quotient and remainder. Think about the thinking process that both Tara and Eddie used. So they used 20 as their first partial quotient, right? You see the 20s here. So 20 groups of 38 is 760 with only 38 left over, right? 798 minus 76 is 38. They added a partial quotient of 1 to fit in one more group of 38. Yeah, they both did the same thing there. They fit the total of 21 groups of 38 into 798 with nothing left over. So the quotient is 21 with the remainder 0. Okay, now let's focus on how the area model and vertical form support your thinking about partial quotients. How many groups of 38 did Tara and Eddie decide would fit into 798 first? 
Okay, so first they were both thinking about 20, right? You can see that there. Um, how did they come up with 20? Where do you think that came from? Maybe they started with estimation. Remember how we always say you should start with estimation when you are dividing? Even if you're using the area model, you still want to start with estimation. So 798 could easily be 800, right? Very close to 800. And 38 could be 40. Now, does that look a little bit better, right? And I'm sorry, I always say to do the divisor first. So change your 38 to 40 and then change your 798 to 800 because it's easy to divide. We're looking for fact families. So eight divided by four is two, and then our two zeros cross each other out and we have one zero left over. So that makes sense of where that 20 came from, right? Also, if you think about 300, I mean 38, and you think about 10 times 38, it's gonna be 380. So you know you're gonna need at least one of them, maybe two of them to fit inside of 760. So anytime you're trying to just think of what would be a good estimate, you could think of, well, what's 10 times this and how's that relate to the quotient I'm trying to get to. Okay, now why did Eddie subtract 760 from 798? Because that's 20 times 38 is 760 right? 38. Oh, I have 20 written right there. I could just use it again, couldn't I? Let's see. No, I couldn't. 38 times 20. 8 times 0 is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. Magic 0. 2 times 8 is 16. And 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. That makes 760. So that's his 20 times 38. And then he's going to subtract to see how much is left over. And hopefully he notices, whoop, my divisor is the same as my remainder. Now you could revise and change this to 21. Or you could just add a 1 there. So then you know this is all 21 together. And just multiply again and subtract again and get 0. You see how that works? Yeah, pretty nice. We don't see any subtraction here in Kayla's, oh, over here in Kayla's work. Do you see any subtraction? How do you think she knew how much was left to divide? How did she get this 38 and this 1 here? Well, hopefully she did it on scratch paper, right? Maybe did it in her head. Maybe once she added 380 and 380 together, right, because she has two 380s, add those two together, and she gets 760. 760 and 798, you might be able to think about that in your head and just count up to 38, right? Six, seven, eight, nine and then eight more. That would be 38. Or you could just do regular subtraction. Okay, so how can we check that these answers are correct? They all have the same answers, but how can we check it? Yes, 21 times 38. And that should equal 798. Always keep in mind the problem that you started with, right? Don't get distracted by these other numbers here. And then as I've been saying in class, make sure that you're doing the math 21 times 38 to double check it. So one times eight is eight, one times three is three, magic zero, two times eight is 16, two times three is six plus one is seven. And then you add it up, sorry, I ran out of room there, eight, nine, 798. It is correct. You always want to check your work because you put a lot of effort into it. And you don't want to just be like, yeah, I think it's okay. It just takes a minute to check it, right? Now, why might you want to use the area model for division? Why might you want to go ahead and start using the area model? You only have to divide part by part, right? 
Maybe you liked the area model of multiplication instead of trying to do everything in this kind of vertical form. Maybe you like laying it out and being able to see it, right? Makes it more visual, okay? We can div record division work in an area model or in vertical form. Or we can use one to check the other one as well. Okay, awesome. Thanks for watching this first video. I'll see you in the next video. Aloha.